as a woman of the household, it can help me shape my kids in a way that uh, they get to understand. For example, I give my son like 50 shillings to make him maybe try to use his senses on how to get to save on the money. Let's say I can give, for example, maybe I tell him like he can use the 20 bob out of the 50 shillings of which the 30 he can use it to save it to help him in the future so that he can get to understand that when you're given a certain cash of a certain amount of, uh, of money, you can use a little bit of it and the other one save instead of consuming all of it. Tukiwa na uongozi wa Solomonic, inaweza kuongoza inji yetu, vizuri na na hata uongozi wake unesakuwa maana katika inji yetu, nesalita manfa katika inji yetu ya ke. Tunaomba ya kuamba, kama tunesa pata kiongozi ambaye nesakuwa na hekima kama ya Solomonic, nesa kufika, nesa kufika mbali kama watu, kama wana inji wa Kenya na inji yetu inesa kusonga mbele sana. Welcome back to this special broadcast and it's a wise one so to put it because it touches on Solomon the wisest character that we see he had 700 concubines 300 wives but I wonder how many children did Solomon have ask your neighbor that how many children did Solomon have <laughs> it wasn't adding up well that is Solomonic wisdom ask him how he achieved that I think we need to read in between the lines now we were going through, we were unpacking what Solomonic economics is. And Professor Ogola was touching on key tenets. He says that ADCA is actually the acronym on what simplifies this particular model. He's touched on awareness. He's already touched on desire. Where does your desire stand in regards to matters to do with social and economic issues in this country and across the world now i'd like to welcome him back to tackle the rest of the tenets the issue of knowledge the issue of ability and the issue of reinforcement so without wasting much time ladies and gentlemen please welcome back professor fred ogola thank you very much thank you very much uh, Noah. So we just tackled the issue of awareness and desire and I hope you are desiring enough. And they say that uh, if you desire something, go for it or you die desiring. And these are the ghosts which will come to your deathbed. They'll be telling you, you could have been this, you could have done that. Me, I don't want any single ghost next to me. Anything I want to achieve, I go for it. I die either trying it or at least um, I achieve it. So knowledge. Wisdom means that Solomonic wisdom means that we are looking at what has been tried and tested. As I've told you, they have talked about some of the countries that have done well, isn't it? Uh, they have talked about Japan, they have talked about uh, Korea, and there are some common denominators. And because you know these things, I'll go very fast. One is meritocracy. They have always worked for meritocracy. And they pick people who merit. They pick people who deserve those positions. If I was president one day, I would choose somebody who I need to serve in my government, not someone who needs my government. Someone who needs my government is coming to steal from me, isn't it? But someone who is coming to serve Kenyans, whom Kenyans need, that uh, do not need the Kenyan government, that person will be good. That's how I end the issue of meritocracy. Zero tolerance to corruption. Kibaki once mentioned it. He started it, but you guys know why he ended. Then other people pick from him, isn't it? So zero tolerance corruption is one of them. That's the knowledge we need. How do we fight that? Low taxation. You know, Singapore, they talk about, is the lowest tax economy. And secondly, Singapore has the lowest government expenditure. If someone can give me a chance to be a president one day, I don't know whether I will ever get that chance. But what I'll do, I'll ensure that we lower taxes and we lower the government expenditure. It's simple economics. There's nothing. Solomonic is not complicated. Because when Singapore lowered their taxes, many countries came to invest, companies came to invest in Singapore and gave their people jobs. Now, you look, in ease of doing business, Kenya can only beat Juba in Africa. Which is, the, which, is the, which is the last born in Africa. You understand? So a last born comes to be better in ease of doing business. Those are statistical facts, economic facts. The other thing is integrity. Kenyans, let me tell you one thing. And I'll tell you a story because this is very important. Integrity, you need to teach them at home. My father was a catechist, Joseph Fogola. And there's a day when a priest had gone for a long holiday in Holland, so he was in charge of the parish. And because my mother was staying with us far, because we were many, we were 11. One of my brothers is here called Gerald. Uh, he will tell me if I'm like, he's our last one. So he's Juba now. So 
my, my mother told me, Fred, we have eaten moga until our tongue is turning green. Go tell your father who is now in charge of the parish to give you some money. We buy omena or obambo. Those are how we do our trade in local market in Jera, if you are there. And I went to my father and I found my father actually counting money in the office. And I told daddy, mom has sent me, give me some money. And he told me, you know, Fred, this is not your money. This is, uh, I have not been paid a salary. And my boss is away. Wait until he comes back. Then I'll give you money. I was wondering, but I can see money. You're counting money. Then uh, told me, Fred, this is not something I can give you because it belongs to you. I told you, but there's no one here. We are two of you. Two of us. Just give me something. I go. Then my dad held my hand and told me, God is seeing. Son, go home and stop giving me temptation. Then he sang for me our Lord's prayer. Lead us not in temptation. I went home so disappointed. My dad told me, son, you'll never understand. But one day when you grow up, you will. I now understand when I see corruption that somebody's father never told them it is bad to pick money from. What does not belong to you. And I could say that that is Solomonic integrity. And I can tell you, I do litigations in this country. What fool I can tell you. We have been called to go at the table to eat and we have, no ref we have to take money. I was fired from where I used to work in Strathmore, isn't it? I'm jobless. But somebody offers me 40 million to make me do a case. And I say, I can't do it because that's not my father taught me. My mother told me, just work hard. And do you know what? Joblessly, working hard, my family has never slept hungry. God will provide for you if you believe. And I'll tell you one thing. There's a prayer of a fool. Somebody who was a, a, an atheist was climbing the mountains. Then he slipped over. And as he was going to fall over, he told God, he was holding on one branch, told God, God, for, save me. If you save me, I will believe you are God and I start worshipping you. Then God tell him, leave that branch. Did he leave it? You can't cheat God. He didn't leave the branch. So those of you who pray for a good husband, then you are looking for one actively. You are looking for somebody's husband. Ladies, you won't get one. <laughs> leave this thing to God. Pray and let God be. And God has been so faithful. So I go to another thing, quality education to most uh, of the citizens. There is a correlation between a country that invests more on education and GDP growth. It means knowledge-based economy. And I don't want to go much because now we have gone to CBC now, isn't it? Now, CBC is about competency-based curriculum. But you have never thought of which kind of jobs do you want to give people who are competent. The most frustrating thing is to be competent and you have nothing to do with your competence. You rather just have no competence and stay jobless than to have it. I remember when universities were sprawling during, during the uh, Kibaki time when William Ruto was the Minister for Education, so many universities came by. So many graduates came by. Not so many jobs came by. And now if you hear the issue of hustlers, this is the origin of it. And you can see that so many competent people cannot have useful jobs and they're suffering. The other thing is about research and development centers. We have to set them up. Heavy investment in technological know-how, like uh, uh, David has said it. Uh, tapping multinational corporation to come here by lowering tax section and creating a good environment. Upholding justice and rule of law. Where a judge is a judge, but a judge is not somebody's agent, isn't it? Where um, a president is a president, MP is an MP. Local resources, let's use them. Because we are taking our resources outside the country. You can see like tea, not adding value. Jealously guarding infant economy. America is telling you, let's go for free market economy. But America are the founder of the term in economy. It's called infant economy. Infant economy means that an infant must be protected first. So if I was the president, I would choose what are the nascent sectors in Kenya. And there I will protect them. And the ones which I, can, I cannot do anything with, I'll trade them. It's called Solomonic. Because you're being told either be free market or be protectionist. Solomonic is either, you are neither on the two sides, isn't it? You are Solomonic because neither protectionist fully, neither uh, free market fully, but you protect what you want. For example, we have no mobiles just on this road doing motor vehicles, isn't it? But we are importing too much of those vehicles. The president's vehicle, I see them all exported, isn't it? Uh, you see how many cars we are using in the government. There are 1,622 uh, guzzlers that runs on this road every day. They are not Kenyan vehicles. Uh, thirdly, shamelessly copy. China has done it. Copy shamelessly. What you ca if you can't be better than me, copy me. And you have done it very well. That has worked. So I've finished the one on knowledge. Those are the main things. The next one is about ability. 
And ladies and gentlemen, ability, national pro prosperity is not inherited. National prosperity is created. So what's our ability? DRC Congo is the, is, the, is the largest cobalt producer in the world, copper producer in Africa, isn't it? DRC Congo has 24 trillion worth of dollars worth of mineral resources. But look what, DRC Congo is number 44, and actually number 44 out of uh, 50 something countries in Africa in GDP. And GRC Congo is the country where we have the most unhappy people. Uh, and yet they have the most resourceful things. So what I'm trying to say, that will not work for you and it never works. The other knowledge we need to do is we need to have what in-country economic blocks. And I will just go straight to explain them. What do I mean by this? In-country economic blocks, Germany did it. Imagine Kenya, Nairobi, Kenya without Nairobi. Imagine Lego, uh, Ghana without Accra. Imagine uh, Nigeria without Lagos. Those economies will be 35% negative, isn't it? Vienna will be negative by 11%, uh, no, um, Austria will be 11% negative without Vienna. Paris will be 6% negative without, um, no, France will be 6% negative without Paris. But you know what's happening? Germany, if you go and bombard Berlin and everybody dies and everything goes to the ground, it will be 2% positive. What am I trying to say? In Kenya, we have concentrated everything in Nairobi. If you get a chance to be president, please do regional blocks. Put up a way on which a country can survive because of global, uh, globalization. Secondly, digital disruption. Any business can be done in any part of the country so long as there's a good road infrastructure and good internet. Simple like that. There is not magic. Don't be told about feasibility studies where people are putting a lot of money on studies which are just being stolen. So the second thing is the principle of subsidiary in national budget making process. If I can be the head of that treasury, I'll never do what's called national budget. It's a lie that there's national priorities. You should do regional, regional sub-regional governments, do their budgets first, and take care of their priorities first is when you bring the national budget. So the regional budget should really inform the national budget because National priorities are actually political priorities. They are not economical priorities. That is, I, I, I cannot, if I had time, I could explain to you more, but you read from the book for yourself. The second principle, regional banks. We don't need not have these large banks that are only on the air here, but there's nothing they're doing for local manage on the ground. In Germany, it's illegal for a bank to set up anywhere. You'll find a, a bank that knows these are farmers. These are people in the economic block. For example, cost is a blue economy. Is there any blue economy bank? All banks are generally telling you, pay slip, pay slip. You're a businessman. Which pay slip do you need? You want to start a business. Do you have to give me a pay slip? Then I should be employed. I should not be doing business. So regional banks will help. Regional or sectoral uh, universities. The universities we have, for example, in the whole of coast region, the six counties, Tana River, Lamu, Kilifi, um, uh, Tataveta, um, you go to Kuali, all those six of them, they only have two universities that belong to them. Yet in Nairobi, we have around 17 universities that belong to us. If you go to Central, they're around seven. If you go to Rift Valley, they're around eight. Those people are suffering, even banks. If you go to Taita Taveta, the governor of Taita Taveta, the national park he has there, all the money paid to come to Nairobi, immediately they are paid. You swipe there in Nairobi. The money never sleeps in Taita Taveta. And the women you know here, a husband who is not at home is not sleeping with you at that night. He's not yours. So if money sleeps outside your county, it's not your money. Uh, I am in, from Ugenya. There's no single branch of a bank in Ugenya. The Ugenya MP deposits his money in another account, in another constituency, and uses from Busia, for example, because there's no single bank branch in Ugenya. So we need regional banks to bring closer services to people and also knowledge in the bank to the people. Accountability is paramount. Here, people just do whatever they want. I mean, if I was head of state, do you know this public service commission? Every public servant will earn from the public service commission. Not creating so many payers where there are ghost workers here, ghost workers there. Everyone will be paid from public service commission because they are duplicating roles and fighting with public service commission for reasons that are not there. The other thing, I'll decriminalize and decommercialize what is called elective positions. Where... I see member of parliament passing that a governor can campaign with 300 million to win an election. 
you know, once he has done that, tell me how much he will earn to pay himself back 300 million. And it's being passed in parliament. Parliament in broad daylight. I, I mean, I don't know, because I said with Wafula, when we were uh, talking about activism, that it has become easier to steal money with a pen, a suit, and a Bible in this country. Because they do it with a Bible, with a pen, and with a suit. A gun, it might take you, it might be harder to steal money with a gun in this country. So I would change those institutions. The other thing is precautionary loans rather than, um, um, pre precautionary loans rather than what's called conditional loans. What is that? We take loans when we are dying. The president goes and says, we are going under. Let us find a way on which you can give us some money. Precautionary loan means you take a loan to anticipate a problem, so you solve it before you get there. When your head is underwater, you can't do much about it. Austerity measures are, are unsolomonic. We need to do stimulus in the economy to grow. Stimulus in the young people, the, 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 the youth economy. For example, youth are now doing a lot of content creation. Give them stimulus for it. Youth are talented. Give them stimulus for it. But here we are talking about the issue of austerity measures. You hear the president says now we are going to cut the budget by 300 million. Then it goes where? I'm going to cut my travel by this one. Then it goes where? Then the other thing, turning public debt into a blessing. Our public debt in Kenya has become a curse and a cancer. I don't want to go to how to talk about it. Then I talk about the issue of focus on cooperative movement, mo movements. Now, youth are, are been seen by many of our African nations, developing countries, as a problem. They actually have published what we call youth as a time bomb. So what they do is that they are now asking for master plans for or prisons so that in case that bomb comes, they get imprisoned. So they see youth as a problem, but I see a lot of opportunities. Because I've never seen any sports person who is above 35, isn't it? It has been stated. Change takes place between the age of 25 and, 30 and, and 45. After that, you are a myth. How can we invest in the youth? The other thing I'm going to propose here is cooperative movement. We are having financial cooperative where people are just borrowing money. People tell me, deposit money to get 3% your savings. This is not how economy grows. We become just too much indebted. And it's a vicious circle, you have said. You borrow, you fill a hole, you dig a hole to fill a hole until you die in a hole. So it doesn't help. We want to transform this. And almost the last one now. You've heard that we are privatizing private sector, isn't it? Parastatal, isn't it? If I was president, I would be very Solomonic. Religious organizations like Sisters, the Muslims and the rest have run very good hospitals and very good things. I will give them a Moravian contract to run these things in a form of PPP. They'll reduce tribalism, remove corruption, and all those things. And of course, lastly, the fiscal policies uh, that we are making, we have no any foreign policy. We'll welcome anybody in this country, whether they're giving us nothing or we're getting nothing. And we'll visit any country with no formula. And somebody says before uh, bombers there that we borrow even without a plan. Even we are borrowing based on nothing. And you cannot know where the money is going. I think we need very good physical policy to work. And lastly, we need a welfare state where everybody has something. In this country, 98% of Kenya. Grab a copy of Solomonic Economics where we can get more context. And also, I think we can open up the Q&A right after we leave this, all right? Question is, where are we going to get a copy of the Solomonic Economics book? Briefly, right sir. Right here, right here. Right here. It will be available on Amazon, mm -hmm. it will be available on digital platform, but okay. those who can reach it out, you, it's everything in the website, there's even a Solomonic uh, website, you can get the book. Okay, yeah. lovely. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Prof, I won't let you go, but for our viewers at home, solutions, 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 and solutions and Solomonic, I don't know whether they rhyme, but this is part of the proposition of solutions to change this country and the world. Thank you very much for joining with us. My name is Nokip Kimboy. Right here, we continue with the public lecture, question and answer. But I'd like to release you. Have yourself a good night and enjoy the rest of your viewing. Thank you very much. Okay, Prof? Finish off what you needed, then we open up the Q&A. Thank you very much. Actually...